everyone. I'm Megha Kapoor, editor of Vogue India, and I am so excited to be talking to the Fab Four, none other than the Bollywood Wives today. Uh, I have to admit, watching season one was part of my cultural introduction uh, before I moved to Mumbai. And I think we can all attest to the fact if you have seen it and if you haven't, where have you been, that from episode one, if there was ever going to be room for a fifth character on that show, it was going to be the bling. It was going to be the diamonds. So it's only apt that we're speaking to them today about all things diamonds, all things style, about, um, you know, family heirlooms, about Indian women and their connection with diamonds and jewelry. And uh, can't wait for the conversation. Welcome, ladies. Welcome, Fab Four. I am so excited about this conversation. You have no idea. Thank you so much for letting me into your click today. It's so good to have you. How are you all? We're good. We're very good. You're good. Whereabouts are you all? Are you all in Mumbai? We're yeah. all in Mumbai. So I'm just going to dive straight into it. And I think the first thing I have to ask is, you know, there's something about Indian women and jewelry it's you know it's it's it comes before designer handbags anything else what do you guys think it is it's ingrained in our history uh when you go back to the mughal era you go back to the maharajas and the maharanis we've got history books on jewelry which probably not many countries do like india it's just ingrained in us when a baby is born first thing you do is put a uh, nazar ka gold bracelet or anklets or uh, bangles. It's in our culture, it's in our heritage, it's in our DNA, so to speak, honestly. I think I have to agree with Mahip on this. And I remember ever since I was a little girl and when I was growing up, for me, if I would leave the house, my grandmother would call me back and she would say, put some piece of jewelry on and then go out. Because I would always be in a hurry and she always wanted to see me with something on me. Like it could be a bracelet, earrings, ring, anything. But a piece of jewelry has to be on a woman. It's just, that's how I was brought up. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. What about you, Seema? So, you know, it is, it's definitely a part of our culture. It's a part of who we are as Indians. I mean, the first thing you do when a, when a girl is born, especially in our uh, uh, Punjabi homes as such, you want to know when, I mean, the first thing they do is pierce her ears. And, you know, you, you put those little diamond studs in. And, um, you know, my grandmother was much the same and my mother the same. Even now she corrects me. She's like, you're leaving the house. Your, both your hands have to have some piece of jewelry on. You have to have your earrings on. And I remember my grandmother used to say, but the first thing that was like a ha like all the girls in the house had to have were a pair of solitaires. I mean, it was like you had to have you have to have solitaires. You got your it's your your jewelry uh, box, so as to say, was not complete. Your cupboard, your wardrobe, whatever. And you know, I think also it comes from fashion. Indian clothes, jewelry really complements our Indian wear, you know, as opposed to so we get a lot more opportunity to wear more. Um, bigger pieces, you know, more opulent type of jewelry. And it accentuates, it, it brings out a side of, it, it goes hand in hand with our fashion as well. Yeah, totally. No, I, I, absolutely. That the solitaire thing is like. It complements, yeah. The Indian attire totally. Even the men wear it at the wedding. Yeah, beautiful. And Neelam, what are your thoughts? Indians um, think of jewelry as an investment. And uh, being from the business and, you know, being you know, part of this jewelry family, um, we know that when a client comes in, their thought process is, okay, how much is this going to cost 10 years from now? And I think that's a very Indian mentality. How much is the gold going to cost 10 years from now? Is it a good buy? Is it a good investment? So I think by and large, Indians look at jewelry also as investment point of view. Yeah, which is a, you know, a sustainable way to, to you know, collect. Correct then um it's a store of value isn't it um right. so i mean you're all such vibrant colorful powerful personalities in your own right and i think that styling choices and particularly jewelry choices is something that's so reflective of personality i would love to know from each of you how you think your personalities sort of reflect in in the way that you wear jewelry and, and style jewelry maybe seema we can start with you 
you know, the thing for me, jewelry has to be a part, like dressing, a part of my personality. So as, as you know, you, you evolve over the years, I think, you know, when, when 25 years ago, when I got married, it was all about collecting jewelry for my trousseau. So it was like, you know, they, you had to have one uncut, you had to have one diamond set. And the jewelry then was a lot more different to what I kind of evolved and I kind of liked eventually. It's delicate and it's feminine and it makes you feel pretty. Jewelry to me is like an extension of my personality. Yeah, beautiful. And what about you, Mahi? For me, I think like we have a wardrobe with jeans and then our dressy stuff and then our semi-casual. I think jewelry is like that for me. I need a piece for every occasion. But what do I go to every day is my wearable pieces, pieces that I can wear, like uh, my tennis bracelet or a pendant. Um, I made some diamond hoops also. Uh, wearable everyday pieces. Um, I do have my wedding pieces also in my cupboard, but I've got a range of jewelry. So if you ask me particular, I, I don't have that one particular love for jewelry. I'm quite passionate about the Indian traditional jewelry as well as the modern contemporary, the art decor. I love it all. It's just so beautiful. And our karigars and our, um, they have, they are so supremely talented, you know, our Indian jewelry, the making and everything. So I don't go for that one particular piece. It depends on the occasion. Diwali to you need uncuts. It's a motive. I love that. What about you, Bhavna? So for me, it started a little differently. I was not into jewelry when I was growing up at all, except the fact that my grandmother would pull me back to make me wear something. Uh, so my first, uh, like I would say, a piece of jewelry that I really remember is my engagement ring that my husband gifted me. I think that's when I started wearing rings. <laughs> I used to wear it all the time. And um, having two very close friends who are jewelers helped me evolve with jewelry after I got married. So I want to show this. This is, I don't know if Mahip remembers this, but when Mahip was starting out, as she had just finished her jewelry designing course, she, I was the guinea pig. She made this for me and I loved it. And I wear it all the time. Even now I wear it. So How gorgeous. Yeah. And with um, Neelam, of course, you know, she's a pioneer in diamond jewelry and for years and for generations, as she said. So of course, you know, I went to her for guidance. Um, this is something I bought from her a few years back once I started making my own money and could afford it. And uh, now I love jewelry. And then, of course, I had my daughters. I had my uh, first daughter almost immediately after I got married and uh, then my second one. And I was told that you need to have pieces and you need to have jewelry for them. So I started collecting jewelry but mostly after I got married. Beautiful. So it's been more of a journey, more of an yes. evolution for you. Now and I love jewelry. <laughs> yeah, amazing. I mean, it's, it's so personal, isn't it? I think what I'm getting from, it's such a personal, um, which I think is um, so special. It's connected to memory. And what about you? What about you, Neelam? So jewelry is something which is totally ingrained in my system, my blood, my nerves, everything. Being from a family of um, jewelers for three generations. I mean, what is my style statement? Um, I always believe that less is more, but by and large, my style statement. But when it comes to jewelry, I mean, uh, Seema, Bhavna, Mahib, they always make fun of me. They're like, how much jewelry do you wear? Stop it. I love to be a dukan and dripping with jewels. But on a daily basis, um, I think just one sort of, statement piece like uh, Seema was saying she likes a mix of uh, rose cut natural diamonds with full cut natural diamonds I love the concept because you know the the design stands out so I like to wear just you know one pop of a interesting piece of jewelry to work but definitely when I'm going out I like to become a dukan <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Put it all on. Why keep it? Why keep it in the cupboard, right? Yeah, you have it flaunted, right? Yeah, totally. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning slowly. I'm learning. <laughs> it's so lovely to touch on all of your journeys and like how jewelry sort of punctuated your journeys in life. So, how would you say your personal style has 
changed over time? Like, it, has it changed? Has it just kind of, have you dug in and like you knew what it was like when you were 18 and that's that's true to who you are or, or has it evolved? I'd love to hear about your personal style evolution. Maybe, Mahit, we can start with you. Well, definitely, like Bhavra said, after you have your children, your two girls, I mean, your she's got two girls, my, children, my daughter, um, whatever piece I pick, whatever piece I design, whatever piece I want to get, it's, uh, I always think of her. Will she wear it in time to come? You know, it's not about me. So that way I've evolved. When I was 18, 19, trust me, I didn't have much style when it came to jewelry or um, all that. I've evolved, but more now it's the focus of my daughter. So I think when I'm buying jewelry, it's always with her in mind. How beautiful. That's so, that's so generous. Lucky, lucky daughters. <laughs> And what about you, Seema? So I don't have any such issues. I have two boys and all the jewelry is mine. Okay. So every time my mother says, I mean, honestly, I've grown up around diamonds, diamond jewelry, because I came, I come from this typical Punjabi family where my grandmothers were obsessed with diamonds, natural diamonds. They were obsessed with them. Like, I mean, for every occasion, they wanted an excuse to ask their husbands to buy them some diamond jewelry. So, you know, I think for me, I got introduced, in fact, after I got married and, and, and my heaps pieces, I've collected Jarao and I, I have a new love for Jarao after that because I wasn't really so much exposed to it earlier. So for me, I think jewelry is all about mixing it up. It depends upon the mood I'm in. But earlier, my pieces were more like, you know, uh, louder, bigger pieces. Now I, I go for like, statement pieces like I, I like spending time on designing my I don't really design it I go to these guys to design it but I kind of give them an idea of what I want but I like custom made pieces like especially if I'm going to invest in a bigger piece then I'd like a custom made piece or then you know if if Neelam has done she's done quite a bit of jewelry for me I think this Neelam has only done for me I think I made it at the time of my brother's wedding Beautiful. so I just wanted something I wanted something, my mother, and you know, everybody was like, what are you going to wear? Which diamond set? And they were all looking at all these big, big sets. And I was like, you know, for one occasion, I want like a diamond, but I want something that's elegant, you know? So for me, it depends on what I'm wearing. And then, you know, if I want to wear Chandwalis, which I love, Mahit Chandwalis are my all-time favorite. I think I've worn that piece of jewelry the most. I, I've even worn it with jeans, to be honest. Like, So for me, jewelry is not necessarily only for like Indian clothes. If I say Jarao, I won't just steam it with Indian clothes. And diamonds for me means it's I'm feeling pretty and I'm not feeling like a boy and I'm not giving anything. Now I have a niece, she's nine. And <laughs> I keep, she says, she comes to my wardrobe and she counts my diamonds and she's like, I want a diamond tester. I just want to know if these are all real. I said, they're very much real. No, but I want a diamond tester. I said, you're not getting it if you want a diamond tester. Start them young. Yeah, right. So she's already got her, she's taken dibs at my jewelry and that's all hers. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. And, and what about you, Neelam? So my style uh, has definitely evolved. I mean, I, I won't talk about my personal style, but um, in terms of design, uh, when I started, I was making more daily wear pieces, um, simpler pieces, because of course, I'll be honest with you, when I started out, people didn't have that much faith and trust in me. They said, oh, she's been an actress and now she's designing jewelry. But um, now I have the confidence and my style. Um, when, I, when I design a piece, I like it to be a statement piece. And my forte is, of, of course, natural diamonds and um, really good quality gemstones, be it emeralds, Colombian emeralds, Burma rubies. So this is my forte. So now it's evolved to more bolder statement pieces using an interesting stone. The focus has to be around the stone, be it a solitaire, be it a color stone. And then the design comes around that. So I select my stone and then build the design. Amazing. Amazing. And what about you, Bhavna? I think my style has evolved a lot because I, when I, uh, when I was younger, I used to wear these long dangling earrings, a lot of that, and uh, big chunky earrings. And I think as I've grown older and I've realized even with my girls, you know, they kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, go towards simpler jewelry. So, you know, as Neelam said, like less is more, you know, something dainty, something prettier, uh, smaller. 
not that the earrings I made earlier, I mean, I still wear them sometimes. I wear them with jeans and a shirt because it just dresses the whole outfit up, you know. So I still love my chunky big pieces, but uh, I think I've gone into a little more uh, uh, dainty looking pieces now. And okay. also jewelry has been a, I, I believe in astrology a lot. So, you know, as the planets change and as the times change, then sometimes I'm told to wear a ruby, sometimes I'm told to wear a yellow sapphire, whatever, but I like to make it pretty. So I rush to my friends, either Neelam or Mahip, and I always tell them to design the ring I have to wear or pendant I have to wear. So it looks pretty, but at the same time, it solves the astrological purpose. Amazing. Two birds. To I mean, I, we've spoken a lot about, um, you know, and which is so beautiful and I think very unique to also Indian culture, the idea, you know, when you have daughters and, and that idea of kind of like collecting and the concept of heirlooms. So, I mean, this is more directed to you, Bhavna and Mahi, you know, you both have some stunning daughters with very um, incredible individual style. And I, I you know, I know that jewelry for, for me and my mother and certainly my late nani was such a um you know was such a beautiful and important part of our our connection when it when it came to you know fashion and just aesthetics I'd love to understand what's your do you influence each other I, I'm sure you influence them does their style influence you what's what's the relationship with you in terms of in terms of jewelry and and is there something in particular like that first piece you bought for them or um you know a milestone piece that really stands out maybe we can start with you Mahi yeah 100% I've mentioned it before like everything now revolves around my kids um now I have a daughter so everything my designs my everything revolves around what she would possibly wear in the future. She's already raided my cupboard. She's already taken a few tennis bracelets, earrings, and she's kept it in her cupboard. Uh, I'm always checking on her. You better not have lost it. I'll go mad. But um, yeah, and I think her first piece of jewelry, uh, she actually got her ears pierced by my late sister-in-law, Shri. I was really quite scared of piercing ears and she took her one day and got her ear, her ear pierced. And I remember on her first birthday, we had gone to Hyderabad for a film shooting, my husband's film shooting, Koi Mere Dil Se Puche. And uh, Jay Aunty, this is Jay Bachchan, was uh, in the film. And she had got Shania her first pair of tiny diamond solitaire earrings, which I still have. And uh, yeah, I'm a little emotional about these things. So I've kept them aside. I've not given them to Shania because I know she loses it. So yeah, I've kept them aside. I give them to my granddaughter first. I put them in her ears first. But um, yeah, you know, jewelry is in emotion. It's it's got memories. It's got stories behind it. Uh, my wedding jewelry, my grandmother wore. My mother wore, and I wore it. And um, Shadai doesn't have a choice. She's wearing it. Also. <laughs> so you know, it's yeah. just yeah. There's a lot of emotion involved with jewelry. Yeah, it's history. It's it's really the history. true sense of, of, of an heirloom. Yeah, so every piece of jewellery, I, I think I have a story to tell. And uh, every piece of jewellery now, I think of my daughter. And maybe my daughter-in-law, if I like her. <laughs> my <daughter, laughs> mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Bhavna? So I'll take the last part of Mahips and continue from there. I think I was very fortunate to have the most wonderful mother-in-law and uh, she was really into jewelry and she has collected jewelry for I mean way more than my mother was into jewelry and she's collected uh, a lot of pieces and luckily I would say she didn't have a daughter she has two sons so everything came to the two daughter daughters-in-law so I got a lot of jewelry from her and some beautiful stunning pieces which I think she had collected maybe 50 60 70 years back you know it, it's like they're really pretty pieces and um, that kind of craftsmanship I've not even seen now you know so I think Ananya likes you know stuff from there more than the modern pieces she likes those really classic old pieces and once again with Ananya I think she's still so young and um, she likes to explore dabble and experiment in more dainty and fine jewelry I would say yes it's diamond jewelry natural diamonds but it's more fine jewelry there like she likes her little pretty pendants she loves hoops 
Yeah. And you said you said that you you lean towards the dainty. So obviously there's some sort of synergy there and what what you both are I, in. I think I've learned that from her probably. It's the other way around because I was really into big pieces and okay. you know long earrings and I think I have probably taken it from her. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um and then Seema, you're obviously an amazing you know fashion designer and you've kind of got this like, you know, the signature kind of effortless cool look. Um what and, and, you know, I think when I think of you, I think of the hoops. It's all yeah. about the hoops, right? There was a time I never left home without my solitaires on. And now just to put that on, I think it's more when you grow older, you become lazy. And, you know, you can't have that push at the back because God forbid the stone falls out. I did it once to my mom's. She had these sapphire and diamond, natural diamond earrings. And I, I borrowed them from her when I was like all of 18 years old. When she go into her cupboard, it was like bobble fest. It was like candy land. And I was like, please, can I wear this? Because, you know, we don't really wear too much of Indian. We're wearing Western the day. So all our pieces that we make, at least I make, I need to be able to use it both. Like, even if I were to make a necklace, I want to wear it with a shirt or formally, and I want to wear it with like an Indian lenga or something like that. So anyway, going back, I, I wore it and I went on a yacht and I will never forget, I leaned over and it didn't have a page. It, it slipped off my ear and fell in the ocean. Oh my God. <laughs> And I mean, I didn't want to come home that night. I really didn't want to come home that night, but the earring fell off. So I think this hoops, you know, after that, I find them so easy, but they're just so effortless. They dress up an outfit. They're, they're, they're cool. They're young. They're fun. And, you know, there's so many different diamond hoops you can do. So I just kind of become kind of a signature thing with me now. But truth be told, it's because I'm constantly leaving my earrings all over the place. Amazing. I mean, so you've got that in common with Kim Kardashian. Didn't she lose her, famously lose her diamond earrings in the in yes, the ocean? Yes, she did. She did. But wasn't that stolen or did she lose it? It was stolen. No, no, she no, stole no, no. She did go on an island and she fell or she dived in, her diamond solitaire fell off, but she found it. Her husband at that time went under with the goggles and got it out and she was screaming. So, so you did do Kim Kardashian. Yes. Actually, you know, honestly. I've lost my diamond rings many a times. I've dropped them and touch wood, I don't want to say it, but somehow it finds its way back to me. So I've been told by astrology that diamonds really suit me. So yeah, sometimes okay. when I'm doing exhibitions, I'm like, my sister looks at me, she's how are you expecting to sell anything when you're dressed from top to bottom, you're wearing diamonds. I'll put them on here, I'll put them on here, I'll put them on here because I've been told that they really suit me. Coming to the two designers, Neelam and Mahip, I'd love to understand, you know, from a design point of view, you must have a particular approach when it, diamonds is natural diamonds, diamonds, they're so specific, right? They're a specific type of um, stone, you know, and I want to know what your design approach is when it comes to diamonds and natural diamonds. Maybe Neelam, you could kick us off. So now earlier when I used to design jewelry, um, it was just about design. And if I liked a design, I would just make it. But uh, frankly speaking now, uh, the price of gold, the price of diamonds, the price of labor, everything is shot up. So frankly speaking now, I keep the budget in mind. It's gotta be um, affordable um, because you know diamonds are an investment, which is great. Uh, but the prices have shot up and I have to keep in mind that I want to just, I don't want to just make a piece and keep it in my locker. I need to make it and sell it. So it's got to be affordable um, for the clients. And secondly, I think now um, whilst designing, I'm keeping in mind having like bigger looking pieces because people want to spend less and have this big look. So I compromise a little bit on the color stone quality. I I do not compromise on the diamond quality because I think, you know, you're buying something like natural diamonds, you know, you know, with, I'm just giving a ballpark figure. If you're going to be spending five lakhs, you'd rather buy something that's smaller than um, compromise um, on the quality, I feel. Yeah, so I keep the budget in mind when I'm designing jewelry nowadays. I love that. That's so practical. And I yeah. think it's useful for people to understand because it is, you know, it's an investment, especially for young women. You know, I know I've got something in my head when I reach an internal milestone that I want to treat myself to. And, you know, those sort of um, considerations are really important. What about you, Mahi, yeah. when you're designing? I, uh, I mean, first of all, I don't think I ever have done uh, trendy jewelry. 
because again, trends come and go. So I think that's been consistent with me. I'm very into uh, the classic pieces, the pieces that you can just keep going back to year after year after year and generation after generation. That's very important, you know, especially when you're spending an X amount of money on a piece of jewelry. And yeah, like what Neelam said, after the pandemic, my approach to jewelry and designing jewelry was completely different. Okay. Um, it had to be more affordable. People are, you know, the p- past 20 years that I have been in the jewelry business, I mean, there have been changes. Uh, women, how they spend on jewelry now, it's not the same. They want to spend less, like Neelam said, but they want the pieces to be bigger. So, um, and during the pandemic, I think women have changed their idea of shopping. They used to never shop online. Um, and now this massive change because they've learned how to do that. Okay. So I come online also uh, with my jewelry, affordable pieces, but easy and accessible all over the world to pick up and to buy. And so that also was a change for me, which I was not expecting because in India, we always like to touch, feel, bargain, discuss, and you know, all that. So that has changed. So I've made it, like Nigam said, more affordable, bigger looking pieces, and uh, everything is transparent. People like Neelam said, women want to know. People, women want to know what the value is of the gold and the diamonds and the colored stones. And uh, so be transparent. That's, I think, been consistent over the years, right, Neelam? Yeah. 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 And, and so it sounds like, in a way, post-pandemic, like this move to online, which really opens up perhaps also makes diamonds more accessible because you can literally wherever you are just learn about learn about what each you know term I mean it's so technical right um you know when you go and sit with experts like yourselves you get to ask those questions but I guess now um that's really interesting and 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 great that you know something good came out of it we can all wear more diamonds (laughs) yeah (laughs) um okay this is this is for everyone because I think one of the things that I loved and definitely got from season one, and I can't wait for season two, is that you're all so independent, you're so forthright, you're such individual, strong women in your own right. And, you know, you don't need permission for anything, especially not buying jewelry. And I just want to understand, like, do you treat your, is is there sort of a rhyme or reason to how you treat yourself? Um, You know, have you got your eyes on anything at the moment? Or is it just kind of something that you, uh, you do at, do at a whim in terms of like, whatever takes you, I know Seema, you said you like to really plan out, you know, what pieces, what pieces you're getting made and whatnot, but what's, what's your, what's your approach to self-love? via natural diamonds maybe we'll we'll term it like that Bhavna maybe you can kick us off yeah you know what in a way what you said is right like not only now but for years now I you know like to treat myself with jewelry you know so I have been buying little pieces whenever I can whenever I like something Um, I picked up quite a few things from both my friends from Mahip and Neelam because a I get good discounts And uh, I get to see the entire collection. And tomorrow, if I don't like something, and also they help me, you know, as I told you, I was never so much into jewelry. They have taught me a lot over the years. I've learned a lot from them. So um, I, so for me, it's more like I go to them. I ask for advice. I ask them what I should pick up. Now I take advice even from Ananya and I ask her what I should pick up, what she would like to wear, you know, later. I believe in everyone by yourselves of course we are there and we'll have our pieces which will come to you eventually but aim at buying the jewelry yourself yeah totally yeah. love Neelam so I'm actually quite sick that way so if I make a piece of jewelry and I completely love it okay I'm always tempted to sneak it into my sort of collection I, yeah, if it's affordable, if it's a, affordable, and if it's not too much of an investment, um, yeah, I mean, I do indulge uh, sometimes. If uh, I have uh, like an old piece of jewelry, I'll break it up and redesign it. Um, that actually makes more sense um, than going out there and investing more and in, you know keeping something new. Uh, yeah, and I actually feel sad if I if I've 
made a piece of jewelry, I love all my pieces, <laughs> but uh, if I've made a piece of jewelry and I'm absolutely in love with it and it sells, I actually feel sad, like, oh, it's gone from my <laughs> stock. <laughs> so I'm sick. I'm a sick woman. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, and what about you, Seema? Well, I have this system. I have a box. My sister calls it the shoe box. But every time I, I, I make money and I save a little and I put it away because I have a list. And then when I come across pieces, I keep adding them to my list. And every time my box is, okay, I have a substantial amount of money. Now I'm going to go and make this piece. That's how I operate. Of course, when I come across pieces that are a little bit more affordable and not about, I'm not talking about the natural diamond pieces I cannot afford and might take me years to buy. The box is going strong. If there's a stone I really, really love and I come across it, I will maybe just, I won't set it. I'll pick it up because I want it to go into something else. And then eventually I'll collect. I collect little packets of diamonds as well. So, you know, it just depends. Cool. Amazing. What about you, Mahi? I like, I mean, I like this whole new change that women are buying their own jewelry and they don't have to answer to anyone. I'm seeing that a lot and I love it. Uh, very, very important. I've always taught my daughter, you make your own money and buy your own damn things. And what about for all of you, do you have, do you, do you look to like style icons? Is there anyone in particular that, or are you, you guys just like, I'm my own icon? My style icon um, has to be Princess Diana. I mean, the way she carried off um, jewelry was just another level. You know, uh, it's so funny that uh, there's this one sapphire necklace that she's worn with like one row of diamonds and like a pearl choker. You know, the amount of clients that have come to me and said, you know, we want that. So I think for me uh, has to be Princess Diana. She was elegant, classy. Um, chic she just carried everything so beautifully so yeah, yeah for me, true yeah. icon yeah yeah I remember that necklace is yeah stunning. exactly I mean it was it was just iconic everybody you know loved it everybody wants a piece like that yeah gorgeous what about you Seema my jewelry inspiration especially the natural diamond jewelry comes from my mother she okay. always invested in, in in pieces that were uh, wearable like you know she can wear them every day because she wears your, her earrings and her rings every day of her life I think I've seen her do it since I was a child she she'll have her shower she'll put on her kajal and she'll wear her diamonds in her hands and her fingers and in her ears so it's like kind of you know how you take after your mom in certain ways so for me jewelry is there's I don't have any style icon as such it has to suit my personality and I like the pieces to just my natural diamond pieces to just be with me forever and I can pass them down to my niece or if I like my daughter-in-law that I don't know <laughs> thank god I didn't have a mother-in-law like this <laughs> yeah <laughs> she also came to me I have to do <laughs> no I like that you know but she would I mean honestly I, I'm telling you the women were like that like Bhavna's mother-in-law Namasi she used to get as a child I would play with her jewelry box and she'd give me a ring and then I'd go back after the holidays to spend the other weekend with her and she'd take it back she's like I want it back it's mine so it was like you know we women are so um how can I say possessive and we're attached to our jewelry that you don't want to part with it yeah yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that's definitely come up today a lot, right? You don't want to part with it. Yeah, you can't part with your jewelry. My mother's still trying to decide whom she's giving what to between my sister and me. Luckily for me, she's not interested in jewelry as much as I am. So I get first dibs at everything. Amazing. Amazing. What about you, Mahi? Anyone who knows me knows that I love people watching. And uh, I love... I have a great admiration for many, many women and their jewelry. Uh, like Neelam said, Princess Diana, for sure. Uh, that tiara she wore on her wedding just blew my mind. And I was all of probably 13, 14 when she got married. And I just was in awe, uh, whether it's Elizabeth Taylor. I think Twinkle Khanna has got some really unique pieces. I think Shweta Nanda Bachchan. I'm always seeing her pieces. Jayanti also. Well, now we're going to come to just uh, a little bit more of a, I wouldn't say rapid fire, but quick fire. I just want to sort of get like your stream of consciousness and just see what comes to mind with these next few questions. So who has the most envious natural diamond collection? 
Neelam. <laughs> yeah. The entire store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Easy. Um, you can say yourself. <laughs> no, I would say Neeta Ambani. Okay. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Yeah. I would have to say my friend Tanya Diol. I mean, she doesn't even wear one third of the stuff that she buys and she's been buying. She's one of the reasons actually I'm obsessed with diamonds, but her collection is insane. Okay. I think my, apart from Neelam, who's got the Dukan, <laughs> uh, I think my, my sister-in-law's, my Shri had a phenomenal collection and so does my uh, sister-in-law Sunita. Really quite envious and fab collection. I mean, that's lucky because you can borrow from their collection, right? I do. Yeah. <laughs> so last question, and I think it's pretty important and you can interpret it however you want. We have been talking about diamonds, however. Does size matter? Not really. Not anymore. Okay. I think it's a personal choice. I mean, whatever, <laughs> whatever floats your boat. I think I would have to say again, in that respect, I've evolved because, you know, my mindset has changed. It was all about size. But uh, now I find, I find natural diamonds. I find the quality and the, the, the clarity and the cut way more important than the size. And I find, I also think that they're more elegant and wearable as opposed to obnoxiously big diamonds. Sorry. Don't be sorry. Why are yeah, the big uh, rocks? Seema, you don't like the big rocks? Not anymore. Not like not like this. Listen, these days the people you see are not wearing, they're wearing headlights. They're not even wearing like big, big, uh, like you know what I'm saying? Like some of them are like huge. They're wearing apartments. Yeah. <laughs> One bedroom and two bedrooms. Yeah. <laughs> So, quite frankly, I'm happy with my, not even the bedroom. I don't know what mine would come to, but whatever. So, I, I agree with Seema. Um, the only time where size doesn't matter is with the diamonds. Cut clarity, color, more important. And um, I somehow beg to differ because it's how you carry those huge rocks. I mean... Elizabeth Taylor carried those rocks, those apartments, like a queen. Um, it's just your personality, how you do it, and uh, how classy, how classy you are as a person, and you can carry it off. So it just depends. Amazing. And on that note, thank you so much. It was such thank a pleasure. I can't wait for people to talking to you. Yeah. Fun. I, love you. I hope thank to meet you, you IRL soon. Wearing jewelry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.